There's some things that are just so specific that need to be done on, on, a, on, a, on a double bass. I mean, I, I rarely play fretless these days. One, because we don't get called on to play anything yeah. very specific. We, we did a gig with Paul Young once where I had to do Pino's oh, lines, sure, sure. and that called upon it. But generally, um, you know, as long as I've got the double bass to, to take most take care of most things that you know that are sort of jazzy mm -hmm. or like old school blues, a fretted a fretted bass fits everything else. You know, mm -hmm. but it's um, you know th there's a lot more challenges with with an upright. I get a lot of students and they're bass guitarists and they want to be a double bass player. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, be careful what you what you wish for here because you know it's a different beast. It is you know, it you know, is. it's a, it's a different discipline. You know, the technique you need, the stamina you need, and the maintenance of them. Yeah. You know, you before if you want to be a double bass player, before you do anything else, find a good luthier, <laughs> because you're going to be in a repair shop a lot with that. Yeah. You know, they're a lot more high maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I do love playing both. But yeah, if I'm doing a jazz gig, you know, I I would always go for the upright every, mm -hmm. every time, and unless oh, and I play electric upright basses as well. Right. What mm. is it? Yeah, t t talk a little bit about that. What is the, the the nuances with the electric upright or or the the the, the traditional? Sure, sure. Well, the, the only reason why uh, well, I'm a collector of instruments. Okay. I mean, I've got like a hundred. 100 basses at oh. home or something like that. 100 bass guitars and I've got like a couple of double basses and I've probably got six or seven electric. Okay. So I'm, I'm a collector, so I'm a bit of a geek. I like them anyway. But the reason why I use, uh, people call them stick basses. Yeah. It's more, yeah. to, more to do with, when I first got the Jules gig, he, he didn't want any bass guitar at all on the, on the gigs mm. or acoustic bass. Now I'd only played in small jazz groups with a little tiny combo. All of a sudden I'm playing in Glastonbury, I'm playing the Montreux Jazz Festival. Yeah. You know, I'm playing these massive venues with big amplification. And of course, the double bass is feeding back like crazy, which mm. never would do that in a small club. Mm. So I had to try and find ways to sort of suppress this. And it, it, I, I was only partially successful. It was, mm. it was a nightmare. So in the end, I said to Jules, listen, are you OK if I use a stick bass? And he was worried that it was not going to sound right, right. very good. But believe you me, I've experimented a lot with the ones I have. So, you know, if you, you have to fool around with them, change, try the strings, try different pickups. Yeah. So I feel as though the ones I'm using now are the closest thing sounding to an, uh, an amplified double bass. Oh, but it's taken great. me a long time. And, and it, some out, outside effects, uh -huh. outboard effects are, are part of it as well. But it's also the way you play it as well. Mm. Because a lot of guys who play... If they're bass guitarists and they go to a double bass or a stick bass, they're still thinking as a bass guitarist. Right. And you can't do that. You know, you've got to, there's a whole, you know, the way you hold your hands. Exactly. And it's an attitude as well kind of thing, you know. Tell me about that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it, you know, it's just the, it's the physicality of it. You know, so yeah. most bass guitarists want this uber low action, which I don't like personally right. on a bass guitar. And you can't do that on, on an upright, right. on an electric upright, you know, because you need to be able to dig in. You know, there's... Like I said, there's a physicality with it. You know, one of my favorite players, if not my favorite double bass player, is Ray Brown. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I love the solo guys as well, but when I play double bass, I'm channeling Ray, mm. you know. And it's all about getting a big, a big fat sound, you know, and a big sort of swell on the notes. your note choices and your phrasing and everything else. Yeah, so if, if you've got like a, a really ultra low action, you can't get your fingers under it and it's a really thin sound, yeah. you know, that's part of it as well, you know. And just, you know, you have to dig in. The Jules gig, for instance, it's not a gig where you tickle the instrument. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm, we're on stage for two hours and at the end of it, I'm, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm absolutely exhausted because it's, it's a very physical thing and Jules wants me to play you know, like all over the bass, because when he's playing with his left hand, mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't want me to spend all night in the low registers, because right. that clashes with his left hand sure on the piano. Enough, yeah, the so, you know, he wants me to be able to play in thumb position, and thumb position is a, is a whole technique in itself yeah. on acoustic bass, you know, you need to get that together. And again, if your strings are high, you don't notice it so much when you're playing low, but when you start to get in thumb position, that high action, you can feel it in your hands, you yeah, know. Sure. So you need to have, you know, pretty strong hands, you know, it's, it's not for the faint-hearted. Yeah.